What is up, nerds? Captain Rahab here. You ever notice how messy your inventory can get sometimes? Especially the miscellaneous tab. You got your repair kits, quest items, and all these different weird various like currencies, right? Maybe you have thought to yourself, I should just drop all these weird tokens and tickets. Besides, what good are they even? Well, lucky for you, I plan on explaining just that in this video. And as always, if you enjoy what you're about to see, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's get into it. Up first, you've got your Pleasant Valley claim tickets, which you get from the corpses of slain scorched throughout your time in Appalachia. You gain access to the basement where you turn the tickets in by completing Rose's quest line, where with each ticket you will receive 50% of the time a gold pocket watch. 100% of the time, every ticket will get you some pre-war money, anywhere from 10 to 50. Every ticket will also grant you a clothing item, a junk item, and you have a 3% chance of obtaining one fancy weapon reward okay and the fancy weapon reward right that consists of two there's two variants you have a fancy single action revolver and a fancy pump action shotgun weirdly enough i turned in 60 tickets i only got one fancy pump action shotgun i did however get quite a few single action revolvers that are that were one one star but none of those were fancy the pump action shotgun was fancy and then I got a handful of other one star legendary weapons that weren't really like, I got a board and a few ski swords that were one star. I would say though, that of the clothing rewards, there were two rare ones, which they're still kind of rare. The thing is, is that uh, the world kind of ruined valuable anymore. And that those two outfits are the Western outfit and the Western outfit and chaps. Up next, you got your claim tokens, which you get from the event Load Baron, which is a great event to acquire loads of various valuable ore. It's a, it's a perfect event to farm up some lead ore. No, they have crystal in there. There's, there's just a whole variety. And if you've not done the event, I would definitely say it is, it's for sure worth it. Exchange those at any of the exchange terminals, which are usually by the mines that this event takes place at, with a few different tier lists. You've got the Rich Hall, and at that you get one chem, four junk material at random amounts from one to 10. With the Exceptional Hall, you'll receive two chems, six to eight junk materials, and 11 ammo at random amounts, one through 17. Finally, with the Jackpot Hall, you get one plan, six to eight junk material and seven ammo at random amounts from one to 17. In your plans, you've got the advertisement posters, ashtray, Brahmin pen. With scrap, you have possibility of aluminum, concrete, black titanium, gold, lead, steel. Ammo, it's 308, 38, five millimeter, alien blaster rounds, arrows, crossbow bolts, harpoons, railway spikes, shotgun shells, syringer ammo. All in all, I'd say for the cost, the exceptional haul is probably your best pick at 40 tokens compared to the jackpot haul that takes 100 tokens. I would, yeah, for sure just do the exceptional because all the plans it looks like that it comes with are fairly easy to get. Like you take over a workshop and you have a pretty good chance of cat of like obtaining any of the plans you would get from the jackpot haul. So yeah, I wouldn't I would only ever probably do the exceptional haul, but next, when it comes to tokens, we have the Mr. Fuzzy tokens. And those are kind of weird. So you get those from completing three daily quest events that happen at Hamden Park. And I've got a video explaining kind of the best things for you to do throughout normal play session of Fallout 76. And so if you kind of want more information on this, definitely go check that video out. But you get these tokens and from completing those, those quests, you then turn those tokens in at the boss's shack at the terminal where you can get a really unique and rare cool outfit and mask. 
along with a variety of other items. I would definitely save your tokens for the mask and outfit before purchasing anything else because that can be a real grind, trust me. But what about all that technical data? Before anything else, be sure you only have one in your inventory each time you go to turn in your technical data with either of two locations. Got the camp and Fort Atlas, where you can turn in your technical data after completing the Brotherhood quest line that came in the Steel Dawn update a while back. Technical data most commonly is found in filing cabinets and other various office furniture across that Palatia. My favorite place to farm technical data is the Enclave Bunker at the White Springs Resort, mainly just because I'm there a lot and those desks. You're, you're gonna one sweep through every desk and you'll probably walk away with at least four technical data, or at least I usually do. So it can be kind of worthwhile. If you, re if you turn in just one technical data, you get 350 XP, 25 caps, random ammo, random aid item, a Brotherhood clothing item slash power armor paint. You got a 50% chance of that. And this is where you have a 5% chance of getting the plan for shielded lining Brotherhood of Steel Under Armor. And this is why I say to make sure you only have one in your inventory at a time because the next category for rewards is either it's two or more. So have, whether you have two or you've got 50 in your inventory, you're going to get the same reward, which is like 400 XP, 40 caps. You get a random one star legendary item with a 15% chance. Like that's not really worth it at all. Random ammo, random aid, you know, random clothing still at a 50% chance and then still only a 5% chance for the shielded lining. So yes, be sure to only have one technical data in your inventory every time you go to turn it in. It could be a pain, but trust me, a lot of these currencies are definitely a pain to turn in. The Pleasant Valley tickets alone took me an hour of spamming my interact button with the bishop, with the bellhop, just to get all all 60, you know, claim tokens turned in. So yeah, it's, it's a grind, so a lot of times it's almost better to like do them as you obtain these weird unique currencies instead of letting them build up i only let them build up because i always forget which is why i made this video to remind people to do this all right and the last thing we've got are the treasury notes to acquire your treasury notes by completing the daily quest for the settlers at foundation and the raiders from crater completing those dailies from them will grant you a few treasury notes per like completion of those. I think completing the Overseer's quest gets you some too, but there's also, I do believe, a few world events. Maybe some regular smaller events also, but yeah, it's just mainly from your faction dailies between the Settlers and the Raiders and the, and some pretty big events. Also, you, but once you've attained your treasury notes, which you probably will accumulate about 40 a day, at least that's how much you can exchange for gold bullion. And to do that, you go to either again, foundation, crater, or the crafting room at the White Springs Mall. Those three locations all have a gold bullion vending machine or whatever, and you pretty much go in and you can transfer your treasury notes there. You can only transfer 40 a day, which translates into 400 gold bullion a day. And you use that gold bullion, well, for just just about like all the in-game content. Everything from like Wasteland, Wastelanders on until you get to some of the newer stuff, which involve tickets. And you get the tickets through doing like daily ops and whatnot, but that's for another time. But with that i think this video is done and i think i might be out of here so hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you did please leave a like and subscribe 
and keep grinding out this Appalachia. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. They're all gone. Bye bye, Spaghettios. That's not how that goes at all. Um, but yeah, it is bye bye, Spaghettios, right? Uh oh, Spaghettios. Uh oh, Spaghettios. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs>